but this has been a, for us, a, for World City, a very special day and a very exciting day. It's a, a launch of what we hope becomes a big, much bigger, much more successful event in coming years. So I could start by thanking um, all of the sponsors and all the World City people and all of you who uh, represent the HR, you know, HR directors at the companies. But I literally have to go one by one and thank you all. But I, I do thank all of you. I appreciate the, the sacrifice of your time and your energy and your knowledge. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful to have you here. I hope you've gotten something out of it. Um, this last piece is going to be, I hope, a lot of fun and be sort of the ribbon on the bow, the, the bow on the package here. When we uh, talked to Irby Lee Foster Jr., named after his father, and his son's name is Irby Lee Foster III, when we talked to uh, Irby um, over the phone about this event, uh, we were just sort of really energized because what he did is he, he brought to the discussion um, a slightly different background. He comes from an accounting background but now finds himself in HR. And, and what he brought to the organization at Clorox was someone who could talk about HR from a business point of view. So he can have the conversation with those uh, bean counters that we talk about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he can have that comp You're a bean counter, though, aren't you? Yeah, sorry, not sorry, only going yeah, go to beans, but we're counting. OK, so the first offensive thing I've said all day, so it's not too bad for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, so he could have that conversation and talk about how, how HR can be a force for business in, in your organizations. And I think it's an important conversation to have for anybody who's in HR. So uh, I'll read quickly from his bio here, and then we're going to let Irby talk a little about what he's doing at Clorox and some of the really uh, cool and interesting and amazing stories that have arisen from his efforts. So he's the director for diversity and inclusion at the Clorox company, where he advised. And one thing I'll ask you to do when you speak is rattle off some of the brands that Clorox has, because it'll, it'll, it'll blow you away if you don't know the brands that are under the Clorox uh, wing where he advises senior management and the board of director of the company's diversity strategy, employment branding initiatives, external partnerships with professional organizations, and supports employee resource groups, and that's what he's going to talk a good bit about. While he focuses on diversity now, Irby is a CPA with broad experience creating and implementing business strategies that increase customer satisfaction, drive profitable growth, and expand market share. His previous experience includes a dual role as VP and CFO for AAA Chicago, and senior positions at the McDonald's corporations where he was senior finance director, Great Lakes Division, and director in international accounting. In addition, he was the director of worldwide auditing and consulting with PepsiCo, KFC Corporation, and an executive vice president for a business management firm. He began his career with Arthur Anderson. Serves on the board of directors, board of, directors of the Enactus Glide Foundation, Museum of African Diaspora, and the Network of Executive Women. How'd you get on that group? <laughs> And he was president and CEO of National Association of Black Accountants. That one I can figure out. Yeah. Um, a native of San Francisco, California, Foster has been, has been featured in Black Enterprise, CFO, Diversity Matters, Hispanic Network, Professional Women, U.S. Veterans, and the Wall Street Journal. He's a graduate of the University of Southern California. Go All right. So we're Thank you. So I'm going to talk today about the power of ERGs for building business. And uh, I have a couple of things outlined because I'm a visual verbal person, so I have them on some slides, and that's why I have my laptop, but I will email these around to all of you so you don't have to take copious notes and we can just be engaged in a conversation. So you talked about, let me, uh, you asked me, Ken asked me to do a commercial, so uh, <laughs> of course I always have literature with me and I always have product. So we look at some of the brands that Clorox has. We're a five and a half billion dollar company with 8,000 employees and we're in 20 countries. We have uh, offices and we do business in about 100 countries. So of course we have all of the brands that you would think about cleaning. You know, one of the challenges when you hear Clorox, so if I was uh, Irby the Third, you know, and, and I'm doing like a rap song or something, or if we're in church on Sunday, it's something the black community called call and response. So well, let's try that here to get some audience engagement, right? Uh, so if I say Clorox, you say, Clorox, Please. Clorox, Please. And it's in <laughs> so after this, you know, I want you to be thinking about other things. So of course we have cleaning products, 4-9 liquid plumber, Tylex, a pine saw, All right, we have uh, glad bags and storage, we have uh, food products, which surprise a lot of people, Casey Masterpiece, Hidden Valley Ranch, Soy Bay, and for many of you we have Burt's Beats which is a company that we acquired. So for the first 50 years, Clorox was a one brand company. Started with five guys uh, with $100 in Oakland, California. We've just celebrated our 100th anniversary. Taking salt water out of the marshes of the San Francisco Bay 
and through an electrolysis process. I'm not an engineer, but I, but I understand if you kind of, you know, uh, electrocute salt water, you get bleach. So <laughs> bleach is really sodium hydrochloride, and that's why we're in Oakland, and we've been there for 100 years. So it all really, it, it all kind of starts at the top. You need a leadership commitment from your CEO, and those have trouble seeing. There's some seats over here if you want to come around. I know we've got the cameras right there. Feel free to move up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that we have a strong champion with Don Canals, our CEO, and really he thinks about diversity in three ways. You know, the employees, the suppliers we work with, and the consumers of our products, and that's key. Uh, for me, uh, when I, we heard a little bit about diversity and inclusion, so I'm not going to talk too much about that, but I do have uh, what you'll see in the slides, uh, like a logo that I'm trying to get trademarked by my uh, uh, CMO so you guys can pay me a royalty every time you use it or look at it. But when I think about it, it's like three pieces. You, you know, so diversity is about having the right mix. How do I recruit and retain talent? Inclusion is how do I now make the mix work, and that's develop and engage people. And then the key component I'm going to cover today is connecting to the consumer and that's integrating with the business. So the business planning process for our company, you look at business insights, consumer megatrends, what is the competition doing, and from that we put together integrated business plans. The four key areas that we're focused on, megatrends, based on our research are health and wellness, so Clorox disinfecting wipes, how do we stop the spread of infection, we're teaching uh, families, and particularly in a lot of Latin American countries, that if you, keep, if you sanitize your home and clean it, with you know, our products of course, uh, there's less effect of being ill. So we donate a lot of products to schools because the kids get the colds from other kids at school. So if you sanitize the toys and all the areas that you're working with, then you're healthier. So it's less you know, health care costs. So health and wellness is a big thing, a healthy home. Sustainability about the environment. So Brita, that's one of the uh, products I mentioned. So at Clorox, you will find no bottled waters. And in the city of San Francisco, you'll find no plastic bags. We kind of outlaw them. City Hall, there's no bottled water. Because Brita water filtration is one of our brands. So one Brita pitcher replaces 300 bottle water. Now during the cocktail hour, all of you say you recycle, and it's a nice thing to say, but we know from the research that over 80% of those bottled waters end up in the landfill. So, uh, so, so uh, that's the other reason why we bought Birds Bees for environmental sustainability, because it's a natural personal care product. Affordability, keeping the cost down. Year over year, we look to, uh, we set a goal to reduce our costs incrementally by $100 million every year. So whatever our costs were last year, reduce it by 100 million. We've done that for 10 years, that's a billion dollars. Uh, so we look at how do we eliminate costs so that we can keep our prices low and make our products affordable. But today the key focus is the fourth area is multicultural, looking at diversity and that consumer. So the consumer is changing, we all know the data. And I'm gonna intentionally not use a lot of Latino examples because all of you know more about that than I do. I might have one or two. I'm actually gonna give you some Asian examples which might surprise you. But looking at the population, you know, today, uh, the 2010 census, you know, white, 62%, Latino, thir uh, 16, black, 13, Asian, 5. But if you project out, whites are going to drop to 47% because they're not having enough kids, right? Uh, Latinos have almost doubled to 29% in 2050. Blacks, interestingly, are going to stay flat. There's going to be 13%. But Asians are going to almost double from 5 to 9%. So looking at employee resource groups, they go through phases. First is a cultural awareness. Black History Month, Hispanic Heritage, you know, Pride Month, uh, Women's History Month, all of those kinds of things that we all celebrate. But many companies get stuck there. That's all they focus on is just the celebrations. Uh, you want them to move along this journey to do more talent development, mentoring and coaching, professional development, and then really becoming an advisor to the company. But ultimately, you want to be business advocates. So in a short period of time, when I joined Clorox in 2006, there were no employee resource groups, even though the company's been around almost 100 years. And in that month, we launched five, Asian, Black, Latino, LGBT women, all in the same month. We seated the leaders with vice presidents. We seated the executive sponsors with senior VPs or executive vice presidents. And we put a business focus on that. Uh, cultural trends, so all of our employee groups, they have committees. But I told them, after going through a year of this, cultural thing, and, um, and and we're going to be, this will be a courageous conversation, I'm going to be very candid with everyone. So the black employee, I'm going to use the term black versus African American, because black is a more inclusive term, because if I'm born in Jamaica, I'm not African American, you know, uh, I'm black, right? <laughs> Just like Latinos are a broader term than Hispanic, because if I'm Hispanic, if I'm from Brazil, I'm not Hispanic, because I don't speak, you know, because Hispanic is Spanish-speaking countries, which excludes Brazil. So I use black and Latino versus African American and Hispanic. So from that, uh, all, we, we kind of over-index on culture, you know, celebrations, 
uh, Black History Month, so the employees say, hey, can I like bring in a choir, or can somebody play some drums, and we can wear daishikis and eat barbecue and fried chicken, <laughs> right? And that's fine, I said, okay, great. Or Pride Month, you know, we just put up a big rainbow balloon, all the rainbow colored balloons and so forth, and, which is good because you want to say that I'm accepted at work. So if I'm a, a gay man, I can put a photo of my partner on my desk, and I can talk about that and not be uh, in the closet, right? So my level of outness goes up when I can be myself, and I don't have to change. That's great, but I think that I told the employee groups, you guys are doing too much of that, you know, because, and, and I'm paying for it, right? So, uh, <laughs> right, because it all comes out of my budget. So you need to do something else than have celebrations. The Asian group was the most famous because they always had good food. So everyone said, hey, it's like an Asian employee group, all the white folks would go, get a plate of lunch, right, and they go back to work, right, because it's going to be good food. So I said, we got to do something better. So three things, and I like acronyms. So AB, I said, here's the ABCs of committees. Everybody, three committees. Advancement. What are you doing for people that self-identify with your group to get access to influential mentors and sponsors? What is the, how are you helping the relationship with your managers and colleagues? The culture piece, cultural fluency, I know that Jennifer talked about that earlier, and this advancement and retention piece is key, but the business component, I think, was a big uh, moment, missing moment for us, because diversity drives growth and innovation. If I hire people, and we all have an unconscious bias, right, and just to be candid, uh, and we're all limited by our personal experiences. So as an example, I'm looking at resumes, two candidates. One is a chemical, one grew in the Bay Area, went to UC Berkeley, chemical engineer. The other candidates from Pennsylvania, undergrad University of Chicago, PhD chemist Columbia. Columbia with the U, not Columbia with the O, because I know this audience <laughs> might think I'm confused, but I'm not. Um, which candidate would you hire? So I'm from San Francisco, right? Somebody from the Bay Area, someone from Pennsylvania. So I went say, in the interview, here's my question. Well, you know, uh, on Fridays in the summer, uh, we wear like orange and black. They said, orange and black? Like, so the, the candidate from Pennsylvania says, Halloween? The candidate from San Francisco says, oh, world champion San Francisco Giants, orange and black. <laughs> okay, so I'm making a note. Okay, Giants, Halloween, right? Uh, at work, we use public transit in San Francisco, so we use BART, which stands for home. So the candidate from Bay Area, Bay Area Rapid Transit. The one from Pennsylvania says, that kid from the Simpsons, right? <laughs> so I make a note on that. And then the third one would be, well, you know, and then we celebrate, uh, you know, and, the, and Castro is like very important in San Francisco. So the one from the Bay Area says, oh, that's like the, you know, the uh, headquarters, that's the mecca for LGBT community, the Castro district. The other one might say, you know, that guy from Cuba? <laughs> So which candidate would I hire? I'm going to have, because I have a bias, I'm going to hire the person that's most like me, because as a manager, I'm lazy, and that guy from the East Coast is going to be a lot of work for me. So I hire a person, so my unconscious bias says hire the person like me. So part of that is we have to change that conversation. So let me give you some things about Asians, because you, know, you guys know Latinos already. So Asian, Asian Americans are a highly affluent consumer group. So here's, uh, and the median household income is 32% higher than the US household income. They believe in quality products, the buying power is 750 billion. So is the uh, dollars. Latinos, as you know, 1.5 trillion. Asians are concentrated in five states. 62% of that buying power is in California, New York, New Jersey, Texas, and Hawaii. So you, can, so you might say, okay, I understand California, New York, New Jersey, Hawaii. Why Texas? Because in the Asian culture, uh, different ethnic groups have a focus on different business entities. So we would know that, uh, Hotel ownership, Indians own a lot of hotels. Might own this one, don't know. Uh, so they, they tend to migrate toward Indian ownership. I mean, Koreans might have dry cleaners or you know, uh, Chinese might have restaurants. Folks from Vietnam are fishing and gaming. So they're down in Texas in the Gulf of Mexico doing a lot of fishing and gaming that we consume. And they're from Vietnam. So that's why there's a lot of Asians in Texas because of the Vietnamese. Four cities, concert, uh, are one third of Asians are in four metropolitan areas. Los Angeles. San Francisco, New York, Honolulu. So as an example, uh, let me jump that. So here, I'm gonna give you three quick examples. Uh, Brita, water filtration in Canada, soy bay acquisition, and then Glad Matchware food storage. So learning from our folks in Canada. Here in the US, everybody knows the metrics. Latinos, 16%, blacks, 13%, Asians, 5%. In Canada, Asians are 19% of the consumers. Blacks, 3%. Latinos, 1%. So which consumers should you be thinking about if you're in Canada? Right, this is an HR America, so Canada's part of America. Yeah. I can talk to you later. Okay. 
right? So there's an important part of the culture, and what we just what we did as a uh, as the company said, this is an opportunity. So we partnered with our Asian employees in Toronto and Vancouver and the Brita water filtration. Right? I don't think there's a Brita picture on this one. No. Uh, so the Brita picture is typically uh, we did it during Chinese New Year, 2012, year of the draft. That's the biggest year in the 12 year calendar for Asian culture. So we, we made the pictures red. In Canada, all the uh, packaging is in English and France by, French by law, but we also put Mandarin on the packaging. We put the dragon motif, and we, because red is a, a color that's very dominant. We advertise in Chinese language newspapers, uh, Ming Pao in Toronto and Sing Tao in Vancouver. We had great displays in the stores. Uh, we did eye-catching palette design development. And what was the result? Consumption went up 30%. We did these in all the Walmarts in Canada. It became the best-selling picture in the history of Walmart. It went up 30% in two weeks, and that was sustainable. It was so successful, we did it again in 2013 for Year of the Snake. And then we also expanded to include Diwali, which is the Indian New Year. So now my Asian employees say, hey, how do we bring this to the US? Because they feel very strongly that they could help us. So we're definitely in the process now. We're talking to a lot of our retail customers you know, Safeway, Kroger, Target, Walmart, all those kind of places that you guys shop. What's, what's your public? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those kind of stores. So that's one example. So we grew sales 30%, getting insights from my Asian employees in Canada. Uh, soybean. Now, uh, soybean are uh, condiments and sauces. So here's the setup. In 2012, July 2012, Don Canas, our CEO, was doing a talk to all the Asian employees. He's going to all the employee groups talking about leadership. So um, and I know you're on the board of directors with uh, uh, Don on uh, Morehouse. So I, so I know Don and he's a Marine, so I, I know that you know you can get him fired up you know, with the right kind of conversation as a Marine. Uh, so uh, we were prepping for this presentation, I saw his slides and uh, I said, well Don, uh, I've seen that presentation a couple, three times, some leadership. Uh, I could probably do it for you if you, you know, were not here. But remember, this is the Asian audience. There'll be 150, 200 Asians in the audience, employees. Can I give you a couple of three slides uh, that talk to that Asian consumer? So I used the Nielsen research, start with the data. I gave them those stats. Fifth, Asian Americans, 50% college educated, 25% grad school. Household income, 32% higher than the average US household income. 5% of the population, $750 billion consumer spend. And Don said, wait a minute. So Asians are one third the size of Latinos and they're half the spin? I said, yes. That's a consumer we're not talking to. Exactly. So I said, you should challenge the employees, right, because get the Marine part. You should challenge the employees to come up with some business ideas. He said, I'm going to do exactly that. So during his presentation, he went through all the slides, and he gave him that data, and he said, every employee in this company owes us your personal point of view. And I challenge you to come up with some business ideas to help us grow market share with this Asian American consumer. And I'm going to follow up in six months and see what you come up with. And the employees were stunned for about a minute. And then they got fired up. So I like to say that it, 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 it kind of awakened the hidden dragon and the crouching tiger in my Asian group. Talk about Asian employees. They were fired up. And they came back, OK, highly educated, affluent consumer, which brand would resonate? Yeah, I think it's one song here. Yeah, Greenworks. Because Greenworks is 99% by the green. So if you're highly affluent and highly educated and affluent, you can afford to buy those green products because they have a little premium price on them, right? So, and we don't have to go all the way to China to do it. We went right to San Francisco, where I live, which is one-third Asian. The city next door, Daly City, is 62% Asian. There's probably more Filipinos in Daly City. If you go to the Ceremony Mall in Daly City, not only are you going to hear Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines, you're going to hear dialects of Tagalog. Right? So we advertise in those areas. And we had never done any advertising toward the Asian consumer. So that came from the uh, I, I did. But the big idea was, if we're having a meal, and this was an Asian meal, there'd be a lot of little dishes on the table, different colors, right? condiments and sauces. So we have food products, Casey Masteries and Valley Ranch. The Asian employees start thinking, hey, should we be making some condiments and sauces, or should we buy a company? So they did research. They didn't just do a focus. They did research. They went to 99 Ranch in Oakland. They went all the way to Jungle Gyms International Emporium. They were walking up and down those ethnic aisles. They did like flavor, flavor testing. They worked with R&D and supply chain and marketing and sales. And they came up with a list of acquisition targets. 18 months later, we bought Soybay from the CEO challenge to buying a company. And Soybay, it, it's kind of, it's, it was started by a Jewish boy and a Chinese girl. So it's a play on that, you know, if you know the Jewish, like, Oy Bay, right, so it's, that, it's called Soybay. And that's, that's how I got the name, and it's intentional that way. 
So we're growing and taking that company global, which is a lot of brands. We also have a contest for innovation. It's called Innovate. We've done it a couple of years. It works a bit like American Idol. So any employee can put forth an idea, and then the other employees comment and vote on it, like American Idol. Then you get it to the top 30 and the top 10 and the final five. So uh, the first year we did it, it was okay. Uh, last, a year ago, uh, we did it, and I actually, I think of myself as the general manager of diversity, so I think I'm running like diversity as a business, and all the employee groups are SBUs, or strategic business units. So the Asian employees were first, at, they were still fired up from the last time the CEO challenged it. So they were like the first group to really get in and think about this. I said, you guys should go out to this like a group. So they had a session and Suchi O'Connor was one of the new hire, had been with the company three months, got involved with the Asian group, was curious about this innovation thing, got paired up with some people. So here's the idea, uh, glad storage containers. So all of you had people over for, for dinner or, or family events and it's leftover food. But the challenge is you can never find the lids to match the bottle, right? We've always been, that is, this, oh, God, it doesn't fit. It, I'm, I'm squeezing it on, it pops off. So the idea is to make it more convenient for the customer, more convenient for us, and we created this cross-functional, here's a quote from Suchi, she said, the idea came out of this Asian ERG brainstorming session. We succeeded because of our cross-functional diversity. We're able to form a scrappy entrepreneurial team to create inspiration around the new idea. So the idea was, one lid fits all. Take a round lid, make the containers different heights. A round lid fits all round containers. A square lid fits all square containers. A rectangle lid fits all. That product went to market in August this year. You can get them in probably in Publix. It's called Glad Matchwear. That came from an Asian employee a year and a half ago. Her name is on the patent. She'd only been with the company three months. Uh, so of course, we're very competitive at Clorox. 90% of our brands are number one or number two in market share. We like to say that quote all the time. Uh, so I know that our employees are very competitive. So I went to uh, your Latino cousins at Clorox, right? And I said, hey, the Asian employees like bought a company and they have a product that went to market. What are you guys doing? And so, you know, they got fired up. They said, yes, we need to like buy us a company. So they started thinking about, uh, maybe we should get, you know, we can't really grow Latino consumer with hidden value rights. Because you notice that in most Latino culture, there's not the side salads on the plate, right? You know, the lettuce, tomatoes, it's all like mixed in, like the taco burritos. You don't, you don't have a salad, then you put salad dressing, right? Uh, so he said, we really, we can do, and we have flavors, we have spicy ranch, we have chipotle and all those kind of flavors, right? But we don't have, we can't really grow there. And barbecue sauce, maybe not as much. So they start thinking, we should like buy like a hot sauce company. We should, so they were like going, they were vetting and they were doing a lot of research. But what they came up with is, a product uh, that, it, it's a meal, replace, it's a meal product. It's called, and you might have heard of it because it's regional, it's called Nueva Cocina. So the insight, we start with the data, we do consumer research, the insight was young Latino millennials are craving home cooked meals, but they probably don't know how to make them and they don't have enough time to make them. So you take this meal packet and you add your fresh vegetables and proteins and you have a meal in 20 minutes. So that came out of the competition. That was the winning idea. When you get to the final round, I mean, you, you get seed money, you get time to work on it, and you present it in front of the CEO and the top 15 executives. So the Latinos had the winning idea this year, and we bought a brand. It wasn't a whole company, it was a brand. So that's checked. Now I have to get you know, my other employees to get working on that. So, uh, so that's one of the ways we think about it. And all employees are very competitive. Our LGBT employees, they've done some uh, brand advertising. How do you, we were, we're actually, uh, counseling, I don't know if that's the right word, but we're coaching the chief marketing officer on how to talk to different consumer groups. So when you go to the agency, we actually put a one-page checklist for them. When you're talking to about Asian, Black, Latino, LGBT, women, you know, uh, millennials, then here's some watch out things for them. And so we actually helped them with that. So the LGBT group did some advertising. We had, um, I'm going to forget his name, Carson, who was the, um, Carson, straight guy for the, uh, what's Career Carson Creston. Carson Creston. Car so at the Out of Equal Conference in 2008, uh, Jonathan Oss, our CEO, spoke there. He did the keynote speech. I think he was the first straight white uh, Fortune 500 CEO ever to address the Out of Equal uh, LGBT group. And Carson, I can't remember his last name. Creston. Creston. I want to say Carson Bailey. Carson Creston. So Carson Creston was speaking. Carson Creston was there. He was speaking, and he was like making some jokes or something about Clorox. So he said something. Funny. So Jonathan, I would like meet with him. And from the result of that, he actually became the spokesperson for Clorox too, yeah, and in some of our commercials, right? So that was one. Uh, and we're doing that uh, with uh, Eva Longoria is doing. We've got a campaign with Britta for uh, drinking water, and the First Lady Michelle Obama's uh, working with us on, on that. Is to kind of drink up, and water is a good way just to get healthy, to drink more water. And Eva Longoria is going to. She's designing a Britta sports bottle for us. You might see in the market soon. That's another thing. 
Uh, the other insight was how people clean. So the Latina consumer spends two to three times more cleaning than the white consumer. Uh, sorry, those are the <laughs> It's just a fact. We go in people's homes, they come in, we watch. So if a white consumer is in the kitchen cleaning for like seven minutes, the Latina is spending 18 to 21 minutes. Now why is that? Because they clean in layers. There's one product for cleaning, there's a second product for disinfecting, and there's a third product for aromatizing. So at Clorox, we own cleaning and disinfecting. She says it's true. Yeah, no, but what's the research? It's not, you know, it's not anecdotal. This is, we, you know, this is, let's start with the data. So uh, we own cleaning and disinfecting, but we didn't have any aromatizing. So we, in the history of Clorox, we launched a product specifically for the, the uh, Latina, and it's called Clorox Fragantia. And it has a Z in it, and it's misspelled intentionally, so we can trademark it. Right, so we think about everything. They said, why is that Z in Fragantia? Because we put a trademark on it, that's why. It's a business reason. So it has a toilet bowl hang that's clear, it's not blue. There's a dilutable, like a pine saw, right, uh, that you can clean. And then there's an aerosol, which we didn't have. And you can find those, and we did, a, we did a test and learn for one year. We did a three-year projection. It hit the three-year mark in one year, and now we're rolling it out nationally. The employees came up with the name. They did focus groups. They did all the time. Should we call it Poet, which is a brand we have in Latin America? Uh, you know, Pine Saw, and the Clorox, isn't that? And, and so Fragantia is where we landed. Clorox is the name people trust, and the Fragantia, and so we launched that product. And that came out of our employees. Uh, Kingsford, all of you, well, most of you grill, you have some grilled food. Now, Kingsford's an interesting brand because in the 90s, when uh, the growth of gas grills, there was, there was a lot of predictions that Kingsford was going to go out of business, right, which is the charcoal. But I, I didn't believe that because, you know, barbecuing and grilling's been around since Fred Flintstone, right? You know, Brontosaurus burgers, how do you think they were cooking them? They weren't using the grass, the gas grill. So, and plus, with the gas grill, you get flavor because the drippings on the, you know, the smoke and all that, you don't get that on the, on the gas grill. You need, you need the charcoal. So what we, another idea from the employees was take that Kingsford bag, which is blue on the bottom and white on the top, and there's this little image on there. It's like a, bar, a guy with an apron and a hat, chef hat, and I guess it's like a grill. And I, I, somebody told me his name is Barbecue Bob. I didn't know that. But <laughs> somebody, of course, he has, a, he has a name. He's called Barbecue Bob. So Barbecue Bob. So what we did is we said, okay, let's partner with Chivas de Guadalajara, which all of you know is like the soccer team. And we changed the Kingsford bags so that the top of it was the soccer jersey of that team. And we put them in all the Walmarts doing a Hispanic Heritage Month and the sales shop, right? Because if that's your team, it's a point, it's not, you know, it's not you have that in your barbecue, people, hey, why don't you get that bag and you're talking about it? If it's not your team, if you want to get your blogging parts, how do I get my team on that bag? And they create a lot of dialogue around that. So that was one. And that came from a Latino employee, and we, just, we went out and partnered with them. Uh, the other thing is, is that we're leveraging our employees as talent. I should, I think I'm in there, I call them my agent, so I'm, I'm their agent, I'm gonna have to start charging. Mm -hmm. So one of our employees, Esther Tristani, who's uh, Puerto Rican by birth, she has a PhD chemistry from Duke University. Um, and then she, we were doing a promotion around parts, we did a concentrated formula. So she was on a, a, like a Good Morning America show in LA, uh, talking about the bleach and, the, and why it was in there. And she did it like in one take, like a, it was like a, a TV show, one take, and she was talking about all the benefits of the bleach there, and then so we didn't have to pay any like outside talent, we just leverage our own employees. That was another. <laughs> and then the, the final thing is I talked about the Nueva Casino. So that was, the target was Latino millennials craving the food. The business case was cooking sauces are a $450 million segment, and it's complementary to our current food portfolio, and it's 100% incremental. Those are strong business terms. And uh, the, employee, the, the executives liked the idea, and we went on and bought that company. So with that, just kind of wrapping up, and then we'll have some discussion, is that from all employees, uh, I listened to the executives, and then I mimicked that language right back to them. So one term I hear executives like to use at Clorox is top to top. Don Canal, CEO of Clorox, Mike Duke, CEO of Walmart, meet top to top. Oh, okay, you like that term, top. I'm gonna use that term. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the same thing we look at external partnerships, so if it's you know, Nesby, uh, or let's, let's use Latino examples, uh, SHIP, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, you know, Pilar Montoya, who's originally from Colombia, right, she's the CEO of the Hispanic Engineers, come to Clorox, and we're going to have a top to top. So she meets with the Senior VP of R&D, the Senior VP of Supply Chain, top to top, we do a strategic partnership, and that's how we get engaged. It's not, and I, so I bring those people, I don't bring the HR, diversity, talent acquisition people, because they don't have any budget, right? And they're just going to be, and, then they're, and they're going to go to the career fair and say, well, how many people do I hire? Well, you didn't spend any money, that's why you didn't hire anybody. 
because uh, nobody knows Clarks. They think Clarks, they, like you guys did, Clarks was bleach. We didn't know Clarks was like R&D and supply chain and finance. So that's one. Uh, I think the top stop using that term. And then uh, there's also a one-page strategy that we use for everything. It's called you know, OGST, Objectives, Goals, Strategies, Tactics. Everybody has something like that. Ours is very visual with a lot of uh, brand logos and, and competitor logos on there. So I told all the ERGs, you know what? Everybody do a one-page strategy. Because if you're doing stuff that can't fit on one page, you're doing too much stuff. And I want you to focus on advancement. So the Latino one says, let's talk Latino. They have another thing that focuses on business connections and then community uh, focus. And that's how we run uh, the business. So kind of the final call to action that I've taken to all of our uh, employee groups is, first, engage employees as business owners. That's number one. You know, so that's the talent development piece. Number two, you know, the trusted advisors. So leverage the external partnership for career development. You know, we did the Brita in Canada, right? We partnered with Walmart. We did the Chivas of Guadalajara. We partnered with Chivas and also with Walmart. Uh, the Glad Met. And then finally, you know, focus on, as business advocates, focus on having a positive impact on driving growth and innovation. So by doing those types of things, I believe that it creates pull versus push. Um, I've been a minority for a little while, and what I've observed is a lot of this work is about push, diversity, or, or check the box activities. Diversity training, check the box, right? Uh, go here, you know, get, uh, go, get a, go to a museum, right? You know, African American Museum, ch check the box. So we get people doing stuff, but it really doesn't change it. Because I start off saying that we all have an unconscious bias and we're limited by our personal experience. So the way that we're doing this subtly within the senior executives at Clorox is giving them a personal experience where they're the minority and it changes their bias. Uh, the Asian example, we went to Ascend, which is a Pan-Asian business leader group, national convention, about uh, two, 3,000 people that was in Anaheim. So we did a talk, just like I've focused internally with the business, I'm now taking that external with our partners. So we, uh, using the Nielsen data and other research, we did the power of the black consumer and we did that at NAVA, the Black Accountants. Uh, Cheryl Pearson McNeil, who's the senior VP of Nielsen, was the moderator. So we had my CEO do a keynote, and then we had a panel: Walmart, Clorox, Conagra, Hershey, Diageo, and they're talking about business and how they get the employees engaged in the business. We did the Latino consumer at Alpha, which is you know the uh, building business leaders, and we had a similar uh, situation. And then with the final one was the Asian consumer at Ascin. So I had my chief marketing officer do a keynote. We had Safeway, right, that's your equivalent of Publix here, Safeway, Conagra, Hershey, Clorox, and they talked about how the employees are engaged with the business. But for my CMO, who's a straight white guy, uh, Procter & Gamble, right, well, in Marines, I mean, not Marines, he's Air Force, Procter & Gamble, for a number of years, Clorox, a lot of roles, and now he's the uh, chief marketing officer. For him, he's the minority, because it's like 2,000 Asians and like one white guy. And he's up in front of them talking. It's like a huge banquet room, like with three big screens. He was like overwhelmed. Uh, but it changed the way he thinks about the employees and his passion. And he's also the executive sponsor for the Asian employee group. So I try to get senior executives to be the sponsors as a way that they get personal experience. So those are kind of the key things I wanted to cover. Uh, open for any, if you want me to go deeper or share other things, uh, let's have that. A question or a comment, uh, jump right in. Yeah. You're welcome to. Um, it's, it, it, these are some great examples of how you can yeah, reach into your employee. Your, 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 they're, they are your biggest asset. Yeah. And uh, the, the broader the reach you have, the more you can sort of do with that. And I would venture to say that within all these companies, yeah. uh, particularly the, the Latin American operations, there's billions of dollars of good ideas just sitting there waiting to be grabbed. Yeah. And the question is, how do you grab them and how do you, how do you pull them from your employees and let them know that yeah. bring, bring those to the I think, it's, I think it's elevating the conversation beyond percents and representation, those kinds of things. Because for our executives, if you say 90%, I think that from the diversity kind of said 90% of the senior executives are straight white men. When you talk about market share, that'll get their attention, right? Because a lot of the diversity work is uh, percents. So, uh, and I'm a visual person, so for example, I say, uh, the class, all of us in schools, you had like a class photo like in your school. So diversity really is like t uh, at June 30, at the end of uh, Clark's uh, year end, everybody go outside the building, let's take a class photo. Now let's count up all the women and minorities and let's get the percents. Next year, let's do the same thing and the percents look good, but what happened is that this turnover. So you hire Irby and the culture doesn't embrace Irby because he wants to wear an afro uh, or he wants to look a certain way or he's got an earring, right? And then so uh, he doesn't perform and then after 18 months, Irby leaves. Uh, even though he might be 
brilliant and innovative. And then, uh, then you hire Irby two, and he's there for a couple of years, and then you hire Irby three. So you know, you always look good from a percent, but you're hiring at the bottom, replacement hiring, and there's no people to advance. So you, that's one of the reasons we don't see people at the senior level because of the cultural fluency of the company embraces. So we're really very intentionally looking at style versus effectiveness when we recruit people and how we ask interview questions to try to you know get beyond this uh, bias that all of us have. It's beyond the preference, it's a bias. So what do we have around the room? Joanna, versus you called it, did you have a question? Yeah, oh, yes, I, oh, I, I, I said I was going to make eye contact. I was watching you all morning, and I told you, give me your questions before I talk. So what do you have? So how the groups were started, uh, so I'll first give you that part. So that work was in process when I joined Clorox, and they had uh, then benchmarked with other Bay Area companies and other companies in our industry, and we landed on these five most common Asian, Black, Latino, LGBT women, but what we did differently, we didn't just let it be a club and you guys like vote and elect people and a lot of that, we just said, you know what, okay, you're the leader of the Black group, you're the leader of the Asian group, and so we actually went out and got the senior executives to be the first leaders, vice presidents. And then we also picked the executive sponsor. That was the first year. Then, then I let it go about a year or two, then we turned. All the current people, actually I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. So uh, Ben O'Dor, uh, executive vice president, chief operating officer, we were in a meeting, I presented the senior executive six times a year. In one of those meetings, he was complaining about the lack of the pipeline of Latinos advancing in the company. So I just set up a one-on-one -on -one with him, and I said, you know, you should, be the sponsor of the Latino employee group. He said, you're right, because I like to fire people up uh, and influence them. So he, he's now the sponsor. He doesn't, he actually comes to the meeting. So when they did their strategy, they said, well, let's get 10% more participation. He said, no, you should like double. So he's, he's creating pull for all of them, and that's creating the career opportunity. So the structure, this is probably an important part, is the structure. So you need, I think, uh, maybe I'm thinking of like a, a visual, so like bowling pins, right, 10. So I think you need like 10 people core to any employee group to make it successful. Uh, the model that I'm using is I use two leaders. There used to be one leader, I'm using co-leaders. Now we have eight functions, finance, HR, IT, legal, marketing, uh, product supply, R&D, sales. And I do them alphabetical so I can remember. Uh, so those are the eight. But my rule is there's two leaders, but one of the two must come from the business. So I can't have an HR person and a legal person run an employee group because they don't bring the business lens. They're bringing like compliance, and be training, and then let's do, you know, let's, you know, act. they'll do a lot of activities, but it's not business. So one of the people has to be from sales, or marketing, <coughs> or maybe supply chain, or R&D, or uh, SVU. So all the groups have that. If I look at the Asian group, you know, and they have to be like VPs, you know, not just people that the group, not popular people, people that bring resources. So my Asian group, the executive sponsor, senior vice president, chief marketing officer. The two leaders, one is a vice president, of marketing, the other one is a vice president uh, attorney. Right? The black group, sales, risk management. The Latino group, marketing, finance. Uh, the LGBT group, R&D, all vice presidents, right? The, uh, who did I miss, women, uh, one was a general manager, right? Uh, and the other one was an R&D. So that's intentional. And then below that you have the three committees, advancement, and I'm gonna email you guys all the slides. Advancement, business, and culture, and each committee has to have two people. Because if Irby gets busy, then it, then it dies. Right? I'm traveling, so two people, so the end, but one of the two always, all, one of two always has to be from the business. Because the business person brings that lens all the time, and they're always challenging the group. Uh, one, one more Asian example, this is how. So the Asian group at, at Clorox, and we, we put in our annual reports, it's very public data, we, our board of directors is 45% diverse, uh, two black, two Latino, one Asian, that's pretty good. Our employee base, 52% women. At the manager level, you know, 43% women. Uh, minorities, 30%. At the management level, 23%. Uh, but the very top is like 20% women and zero minorities. So we still have some room. The board is more diverse than my senior executives. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so I think from that, you have to make sure that you get the kind of the right level of people in there and they're engaged from that, that business component. And, and that draws it. So uh, each of the committees works that way that you bring the business piece. And then I have them do a one-page strategy to say, what are the kinds of things? And if it's too heavy on cultural community stuff, then I said, that's too, you know, that's five minutes too many, maybe it's like, we do like quarterly. Maybe once a quarter you can do something, but if you're doing more than that, it's too much. So I think it's who are the leaders. So, I, so it's the sponsor, the leaders, the committees, and the other term that I use uh, is chief of staff. 
because I, I love that show, West Wing, right? And, uh, and so if you think about it, how often do you see the president and vice president together? Rare, like State of the Union meeting, something like that. The vice president's over going to some foreign dignitaries' funeral, something like that. But the president and the chief of staff are always together. So what happens is, is the leader of the group is like the president of the, of the ERG, and the chief of staff is typically a lower level manager, supervisor, but they're getting exposed to a senior executive, but they're actually running the ERG like day to day, and they influence all the committees. So I think that's a way that you kind of build in that opportunity for people to be, uh, to be developed. I think that was one of the things we said. I just have a question about allocating resources yeah. and time. Yep. It takes a lot of time to do does. research and you know, go into the stores. Sure. So do you give them free reign or do you give them X number of hours? Or how does that work? That money comes from the business. Because if it's a business initiative, the business will pay for it. So for example, that acquisition of Soy Bay, I didn't fund that. The senior VP general manager of, the, we call it the specialty brands, it has all the food, Kingsford, Charco, you know, Hidden Valley Ranch, he put up $30,000. And he funded the travel, the research, and then we got people from R&D, and, and so it's actually, it's, it's a business initiative that creates the pull, right? Because the people have the resources, the business leaders, not the HR leaders, they don't have budget. So I think it's that way, it's like with the business lens, and then we present to these, like, like I go six times a year to the executives and once, sometimes twice a year to the board, and each time I go to the senior executive and present, we have a people and culture team, it's called, uh, I bring an ERG with, but not a VP or director, usually manager levels. I mean, the last uh, month, in September, I brought, it was, I brought the Latino ERG, uh, one person, Tara Galejos, five years out of college, she started with us as an inroads intern, undergrad degree from St. Mary's in the Bay Area. Uh, the other person was Belen Ariano, she's got an a engineering undergrad, an MBA from UCLA, been with Clorox two years. That's who I bring with me to talk to the CEO. So, and they're captivating, like they talk about their personal experience, they talk about what the ERG's done. Uh, we got Latino Style recognized us with top five, you know, uh, Hispanic ERG, and my, and my boys like, top five, they were like insulted, top five, what's up with that? How come we didn't win? I, I mean, I love that competitive spirit, and then like, the ConAgra Foods won because ConAgra was using employees and original recipes, plus the moms of the employees were giving like, the, yeah, the ingredients, and, and when they read it, they said, oh, okay, I see why they won, but next year we're gonna get it, we're gonna be number one. So I think that's part of it, is really the business brings the resources because we're talking about growing market share with the consumer. And that's where the fund, the funding's not gonna come out of diversity. For me, the second part of that question yeah. is, managers giving people time? Right. Yeah. Otherwise, yep. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so Benno, who's this, uh, the executive vice president, he's the, he's the sponsor of the, uh, the Latino ERG. And he's German by birth. Uh, and he tries to play, he's got a funny way, he tries to, when he introduces, uh, he's talking, he tries to play a minority card saying, well, I'm just like you guys, and, and you know, because English is not my first language. I said, okay, so I'm gonna give him a pass on that, because he's German. Uh, but, he, but he identified, so what he actually asked me to do in front of all the senior executives is we, you know, we have a, uh, it's called a performance management plan, PMP, where you put your goals. So for us, 40% of your performance is based on people initiatives, right? And so diversity is a people initiative. So actually, I gave, I crafted language that, and, I, and we send it around to all the employees that are involved with any external partners or ERGs, put this language right in your ERG, because Ben O'Dor said to do it, right? So I bring him, right? And every employee that does it, that's part of their performance plan. Yeah, so we, it's not like a, because a lot of times it's like a club, and your manager say, okay, you can go to that meeting, but you still gotta come back here and do eight hours of work. No, this is like part of what we do. So I think you have to be very transparent and intentional, and get it, get it in writing, yeah. Who else over here? Anyone? Up here? You guys are all good. Got all your legal questions out of the way, all your Latin American questions. <laughs> and the innovation contest we also do, uh, it, it's, it's a global contest, so we have other countries that play in with that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So every, every employee can play along with that and, and contribute an idea and go to market. Because mm -hmm. for most, most multinationals, as they go increasingly global, yes. you're going to find there's all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of you know, the products that may sell here. Correct. Are entirely different. And vice versa. And we, vice versa. Like the Poet, which is a Latin American brand. It's a, it's a dilute, dilutable, like a pine salt. We, we, we brought it, that was actually, it, it failed. We tried to bring it here in the U.S. for the consumer, and nobody understood it and so forth, so we, we ended up with the Clarks for Hansi. So we tried to go both ways. Barbie, thank you very much for that. Show.